10 mistakes coin collectors make. You don't want to make these mistakes. My name is Daniel and you are watching Coin Help You. And here's my Portsmouth Coin Shop website where you can buy coins from us if you're interested in buying coins. We're always putting inventory up and we have auctions up that you can check out. Over here are the new listings. So if you get a chance, check out PortsmouthCoinShop.com. So we're going to start off with 10 mistakes that coin collectors make. And this is not the, an exhaustive list. There are so many other mistakes to make out there, but these are some of them that come to my mind and, and I was kind of inspired by a few things that I, I've heard over the last couple of weeks. So let's get started with this. So number 10 is storing coins in vinyl flips. I know that vinyl is not the same as it used to be, but I recommend using non-plasticized Mylar 2x2s and flips. These are Mylar windows. As long as that window is not breached and you staple a coin in there, it should be okay. I rarely have any trouble uh, with my coins in those holders. Now, the only time I would have trouble is sometimes the ink fades if it don't sell quick enough out front because of the sun. But my, I have coins out there. I've had a coins in these 2 by 2s for years. Plastic flips. This is the other one here. I use a safe flip and I just stay away from the vinyl. Uh, Non-plasticized, like I said, that's what I use. If you don't, then you're going to get some type of residue or your coins can tone. Uh, different things can happen to your coins. Uh, coin capsules are okay too. Someone might ask that. Another mistake I see, and this is number nine, is buying coins online, thinking the sellers are honest or knowledgeable. Just because someone's selling coins online doesn't mean they're selling what they even know what they're selling. There's some, there, I got the mint errors up here on eBay. So many people are selling non mint errors as errors. And all, and, and it's not the case for most of these coins. I mean, I just typed in mint error in the coins and it's 6,100 plus sold results here. Not all of these are mint errors that are worth money. Now, that's what you have to think in your mind. Does this person really know what they're talking about? Did this bid, was this bid by somebody else or was it by the same person who has another account? All these things come into play when you think you're going to buy something online that's going to be worth money or you can resell. Buying unsearched rolls and lots. I typed in a Google search, unsearched rolls. Look, unsearched rolls are very difficult to come by. You're going to have to go through a dealer who actually bought a collection that was put back years ago. If you go to eBay and do it, or you go to Mercanti, or you go to Etsy, or any of these online sites and try to buy unsearched rolls, you are going to get yourself a roll that's put together, that's been searched, or a nothing roll. Almost, I mean, 90.9 times out of 10. You might get lucky. But one thing I noticed whenever I searched this is right here. CoinAuctionsHelp.com. That's my website. And I have done articles and published articles on this way before I had a YouTube channel. If you get a chance, come over here and read this article. I have it all laid out detail by detail for anyone who wants to buy and search rolls or thinking about buying and search rolls. And then Jim BU. That means a coin should be mint state 65 or higher. Okay. But some people use that to their advantage. They'll put 30 inch mirrors on coins. They'll take pictures of clean coins and not tell you they're cleaned. And they'll look really nice and bright. And that leads me to number seven, buying coins that you think are a, a really good value and that you can flip or turn, maybe send off for grading and make a bunch of money on. If you're not very experienced in this business at all, that is a no-no. Even if you are like me, it's still a no-no sometimes because you can buy coins based off of images all day long. And eventually you're going to buy, or at least for the most part, you're going to buy coins that have been cleaned over dipped something's wrong with them if it wasn't the case they would send that coin off themselves and make more money that's something you need to think about every single time you see a coin that looks too good to be true you have to think why didn't this seller send this thing off oh they're going to throw excuses out that i'm not supporting the grading companies or um i you know how they are they're not consistent that that's a that's valid but it's also when you're a seller, it's a cop out, especially when you're selling graded coins along with what you got up at raw. So you've got ungraded coins, some of these sellers do, and then they got graded coins. They know what they're doing. So don't fall for that. You're not going to get a, a great deal. You're going to have to maybe 
cherry pick some varieties or something like that. You have more of a chance of doing that than you do buying a gem off eBay or another site and then sending off a grading and making money on it. Most of the time you're going to lose money. And then buying coins from newspaper ads, magazine ads, falling for the hype and the hype, whatever they put on it, it doesn't matter. Come from the vault, especially for Ohio residents or you know California residents. I did a video on it. Um, I entitled it How Elderly Would-Be Coin Collector Gets Scammed by Coin Ads. I mean, this this is a, a very good video I did on someone who was ripped off. And also, here is these veteran magazines. They target you guys. They target you because they know that you are either a Vietnam veteran or a Gulf War veteran or whatever war you served in, World War II, there's still World War II veterans around, and they know that you're getting a retirement, and they know that you're thinking about your end of your life, and they prey on that. They prey on your ignorance about coins, and they make it look like, this has got Reagan on the holder and a label. It's going to be worth money, It's and it, they're going to overcharge you, and then you're going to leave these coins to your family, and they're going to realize that this is not worth what he paid for them, and you just don't want that stain. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to buy from a reputable dealer. Don't fall for the ads in these magazines. And then buying coins that are not graded by PCGS, NGC, ICG, or ANACS. Now, if you are experienced in the coin business and you know how to buy some PCI slabs, you're buying the coin, not the, the holder, that's fine. But I just cracked out a bunch that I put in a video recently. And over here is my website again. And I provided this information. I've had it up for years. It shows you the ones that you do not want to buy from. You know, CAC is coming out with a grading service. Maybe it'll be a good one too. But you just want to steer clear of anything that's not graded by a reputable grading company or you're going to get your, your butt handed to you and you're going to lose your money. That's just, that's the way it works. Uh, you might get lucky every once in a while, but I wouldn't count on it. I mean, I wouldn't bank my money on getting lucky because someone made up these holders is going to maybe make a mistake and actually, or actually get it right one time. It's not a good way to spend your money and invest in this hobby and actually enjoy the hobby. Buying coins off TV. I mean, you can do it. You're going to get legitimate coins, graded coins and all that, but you're going to buy for hype and you're going to pay more than what you can get it for if you just went to eBay and bought from a reputable dealer. Don't get me wrong. There are reputable dealers on every one of these selling platforms online, eBay included. Matter of fact, I've sold on eBay and I know there's a lot of good dealers that sell on eBay. So you can find good dealers, but you have to watch out for the ones who aren't. And everybody that's selling there is not good. That's that's what you have to think. And then, this is a big one. People searching their change for coins that might be worth money, but don't understand the difference between a mint error and a variety. Don't know the coin minting process. So you don't really know what you're looking at when you get a coin. Then they get a microscope and try to find something and then throw it up in a forum. They tell them it's damaged and then they're frustrated. You don't want to do that. You really need to come over here and watch my video, How Coins Are Minted. I have provided so much information. I mean, I'm talking uh, uh, decades of my life I've spent in this business, and I've had to learn new things even recently myself, and that's how difficult it can be. But this is not that hard because there's only certain things that can happen during the minting process. Once you learn that, you narrow down your search. You don't put out damaged coins thinking there's something special you actually narrow it down to the varieties or you want to look for mint errors and that's something you need to think about it's a huge mistake people make you know just jumping in this blindly without having you know it's like going hunting you don't go hunting without a gun and a license and having your orange on and and a proper attire and uh, you know as far as training i mean you just can't you're not going to get a deer if you don't know how to hunt deer you're not going to get a double die if you don't know how to do it if you don't get the tools of the trade. Tools of the trade here is not just a magnifier. It's not just a book. It's also educating yourself so that you spend less time on damaged coins. Another one I see all the time, people come in the shop all the time. I was just tagged in a Facebook question. Someone posted on Facebook in one of the Facebook groups, the community groups, and asked if there was someone reputable that they could have a coin checked out. They already looked online, so they know it's worth a lot of money. So they're going to come in the shop and they're already going to think they have a bunch of money. They want to put it up on the, online and sell it is what they said. They did a Google search. I know what they did and they've looked up a coin that maybe a date they saw that was worth something somewhere. And they saw the ads from one of these selling platforms that had it for 10000 or 5000 They're going to bring a coin in the shop and that coin's going to be worth either face value or a few dollars and that's it. Don't make that mistake. Get a price guide. 
buy a coin price guide like the Red Book, the 2023 Red Book, or go over to Numis Media, uh, that, that price guide, go to PCGS Price Guide. There's just type in coin price guide, then go to one of those, and it'll give you a better idea what your coin will sell for or what your coin is actually worth. I even use eBay sold auctions. That's another one you can try. But you have to watch there too. No guarantee that that coin that you're looking at sold to somebody. It's not no guarantee it's worth. I mean, we could go back and look at that real fast. You see all these coins here? There's no guarantee that that coin's actually worth that, but it'll still give you a more realistic idea instead of the thousands of dollars you see on those ads. And here's another example of that. I mean, you type in 1982 penny value. Look, 19, <laughs> almost 12, $1,200. It's not worth that. It's not a small date. It's not got a, it doesn't have a D, uh, $4,950. See, those ads come up first, right at the top when you're using your phone. This is more realistic, USA Coin Book, or go to my website, or, you know, uh, I go over here to my help community. Here's another example, and this is number one, and I kind of covered it already, but collecting blindly, okay? Collecting without any knowledge, with preconceived notions that you know better than the experts, and that every time you post a coin up there, you want to argue and debate and carry on about how, oh, I found the one that... that Everybody's been missing all these years. They've said that it can't be this coin. It, it, this error can't be on this coin, but I know that I found it and I, or I see people on coins or there's a conspiracy or I see all this stuff. If you are doing that, you are literally out to lunch on coins because you have to learn the coin minting process. You can't collect blindly. You can't go into help communities and argue with all the experts and people that's trying to help you. There's nothing wrong with asking more questions. But it's not what you say or what you ask. It's how you do it. And when you do it in a disrespectful manner or in a manner that says, I don't consider you guys have valid comments on my coin or whatever it might be, that is the worst thing. We don't need that in this hobby. We don't need disrespect. We don't need rudeness. And don't get me wrong. Hey, I've been a party of it myself because sometimes I get frustrated. You get frustrated with people online because they just seem like they just don't want to listen to what you're trying to tell them and you're trying to teach them and then they act like they've got to teach you. And I'm not saying I'm not still learning, but there's some things I know for a fact and a hundred percent fact. And since I do it for a living, I have to know that. Otherwise I would lose money all day long trying to, to do it their way. You know what I mean? I mean if, I, if I listen to them and believe what they said, then I would go out and buy all these coins and I, I would lose my money. So it's very important here. Don't go into coin collecting blindly. Don't go in and not listen to people who are experts. You have to listen to people. L listening is really number one on the list. Be a good listener in this hobby. That's the main thing. Be a good listener. Realize that maybe that person not saying what you want to hear, but they're telling you what you need to hear. And if they're giving you misinformation, there's all kinds of sources out there that can correct that. So you also need to do self self-searching, self-reflection. So hopefully that helped you. There's a lot of things here, a lot of information. I tried to lay it out the best I could, but you don't want to fall into these traps. Coin collecting is about finding that good, honest, and knowledgeable dealer or even a group like a coin club. And you can find them going to coin shows or even online and talking to them and figuring out what you want to do with your you know, coin collecting or talk to other coin collectors. I'm sure that there's a way to find other coin collectors. You might run into them going down to the uh, antique mall. You might see someone looking at the coins and say, hey, you collect coins too. And, you know, maybe you make friends. That's the whole point of this hobby is to have a community where everybody supports each other. And then if you want to be a part of it, then you can find someone who can help you out a little bit with it or at least sell you coins that are what they say they are and not something they're not. So thanks for watching my latest video. Please like, share, and comment, and have a great day.